We are moving to a smart third industrial revolution all over the world. This is a completely new infrastructure for how we organize society. It's comparable to the shift from the agricultural era to the industrial age at the turn of the, 20, in the beginning of the 20th century. It's a big deal. So what's happened is um, you know, the major economic paradigm shifts occur when you have new communication revolutions, converging with new energy regimes, new modes of mobility. Because then it changes the way we manage, communicate, power, the energy, and move, mobility, the economic and social life. So we're now moving to a third industrial revolution made up of the communication internet. We all are already connected, World Wide Web. Now this digital communication internet is just now converging with the digitized renewable energy internet. We have millions and millions of small, of, of small players that have solar on their roofs or they have cooperatives for wind all over Europe and the world now. We're producing their own solar and wind and uh, at zero marginal cost because the sun and the wind don't send a bill after you pay for it, and, you know, installing it. And they're sharing their, their solar and wind across uh, increasingly digitized electricity grids that act like an energy internet, using the same data and analytics we use on the communication internet. So we're sharing energy across continents now, just like we share information, news, and knowledge. Now those two internets are joining with a third internet, a mobility and logistics internet, made up of electric and fuel cell vehicles, powered by solar and wind electricity from the energy internet. And these vehicles will be autonomous over the next 10 years, and they'll be operating autonomously by big data and analytics from the telecommunication internet. And then all three of those internets will ride on top of a platform, the buildings, which become the internet of things. So the buildings are gonna get smart and digital. Every building in Italy is gonna to have to be retrofitted and weatherized to be made resilient to climate events like floods and droughts. They're gonna to have to be energy efficient. Then they become open nodes. So every building in, in Italy and across the world is gonna be an edge data center. All those big giant centralized data centers we now know from the ICT companies and telecom, they're gonna think those are weird in 20 years from now because the, uh, the actual uh, Technology now allows everyone to have edge data centers in their homes, offices, factories, and then they can blockchain all sorts of platforms for economic activity and social life. So every building is, is retrofitted, make it resilient to climate change. Every building's a node, it's open. Every building has edge data centers, very cheap, that can then communicate and do economic activity and social life all over the world, virtually and physically. Every building's a charging station for your electric vehicle and every building and those charging stations are also energy storage. So if, you, if uh, they need electricity back on the grid and the price is high, your vehicle is going to send some of its electricity stored back to the grid. So the new infrastructure is everyone owns the new infrastructure. Every solar roof, every wind turbine, every electric vehicle, every charging station. It's a distributed infrastructure, not a centralized one. Volkswagen's leading. I mentioned them in my talk. Volkswagen has announced, this is breathtaking, that they are putting out the last internal combustion platform ever. I think it's around 2026, 27. This is it, it's done. And they are projecting that they will put out by 2028, 22 million electric vehicles, which will be one quarter of the production of the world. But all the other companies are moving as well. And what's interesting about this is when we move to electric and fuel cell vehicles in car sharing services, we're going to eliminate probably 80% of the vehicles in the world with car sharing services because it'll mean you use less vehicles and you have more ability to, to move people around. And uh, the other 200 million vehicles will probably, many of them will be owned by the auto industry, the companies, and they will provide car sharing services. and. So this is, a, this is a big revolution in place. And what it means is this. We, produce, we, we consume 90 million barrels of oil a day in the world. Two thirds of it goes to transport. It's over. By 2028 or 29, we will see an inflection point and the collapse of the fossil fuel civilization. By around 2028, when we get to that many vehicles on the road, that's it. Now the key is the market is speaking because now the price of solar and wind is now cheaper than, way cheaper than nuclear, way cheaper than coal, way cheaper than oil, and this is what the news is, now cheaper than natural gas.
So those are all stranded assets. The market is very powerful. The market is speaking. So the auto industry is saying the market is speaking. And electric vehicles will be cheaper. Electric vehicles unsubsidized will be competitive with uh, traditional internal combustion vehicles around 2023. They'll be cheaper by 2026 and seven. It's over for the fossil fuel era. Transport is leading. So every time I meet an engineer from the auto industry, I want to kiss and hug them. They're leading us in and it's going to come very quick.